Well, Rovers, a lot of times I get asked, what kind of safety equipment do I take on board Wave Rover? Today I'm going to show you. The Wave Rover 650, a design based on my solo ocean crossings. She's small, light, and yet easy to build, but strong enough to cross any ocean. My name's Alan Mulholland, and this is the Wave Rover story. Well, let's go below and check it out. Well, Rovers, the number one piece of safety equipment that everybody needs is this thing right here. You've got to make sure that it is well rested, that it has been nurtured in the sense that you have, uh, you have experience, you've, you have knowledge, and it's going to get you through most emergencies with practically nothing else. In my training as a younger man, as a naval officer, uh, I was put in situations or you're tested, you're, you're uh, expected to not panic. All those things uh, come in so handy when you have an experience at sea that really requires the mental capacity to deal with it first and foremost. The second most important safety uh, thing you can do is make sure that the rest of the body is in good shape. And by that I mean you've got to make sure you've got a good sense of balance because just recently I had a situation on board the boat here. I'm tied off. I'm, I'm uh, dealing with the yard and it was the center of the yard. So even if there were supports around the mast to lean against, that wouldn't have helped me whatsoever. It was, it was a good six feet from the mast after the mast that I had to be. So I had to make sure that I was well balanced and that I had the strength to hang on to the boom yard and sail pack with one arm and then the other hand had to do all the work. So that, that's just an example. Um, you've got to make sure you're in reasonably good shape. You have to make sure you've got flexibility and strength. So those are things that you ought to really concern yourself about before you even start looking at equipment. So number one is your mental capacity. And you know, if you're given to bouts of depression, I wouldn't recommend setting off sailing on an ocean, certainly not as a solo sailor. You know, you've got to make sure you're in the right headspace before you cast off. And number two, like I said, the body itself. Now that we've covered that, the two most important things you can do for your safety at sea, we're going to look at what equipment I carry. So one of the major pieces of equipment you're going to carry is an EPIRB. So this gives your position should you uh, should you find yourself in difficulty and this is a this is something you do not play around with it's used as a mayday this is more or less sending a message anywhere in the world saying i need i need help immediately so an eperp is not something you want to cheap out on you want to get the best quality you can in this case uh, this is registered to me uh, the um, the communication certificate would have my uh, my name, uh, an emergency contact, how many people are on board, the size of the vessel. All this important information will be immediately sent off to the nearest rescue coordination center. This EPIRP has a 10-year battery. I'm four years into it because this is the same one I carried on the original Wave Rover. The battery itself is replaceable, so I mean this will last you a lifetime. It's a, it's a very good system. So that's number one. Know how to operate it as well, although it is very simple to operate, but each one will be slightly different. The second piece of equipment I carry is the Garmin communicator that I have. So this allows me to send short texts anywhere in the world. Now it doesn't happen instantaneously. Oftentimes I find that it's 30 minutes or more before my text message has been delivered and it can be up to about 45 minutes to an hour before I receive a response. However, this does have an emergency feature. I mean in itself it's terrific because I send a message every day 
to uh, both Mrs. Rover and uh, Seahawk, you know, my, my uh, meteorologist, who's also part of my safety protocol. By sending messages to those folks every day, it lets them know that I'm okay. And if I, I also have a protocol in place that if they don't receive a message, and, there, and the EPIRB hasn't been activated, the chances are this has failed. So it's not a panic if I don't get the message out, but it's never failed me. This also has an SOS function on it, which again will be a message sent by satellite to the Rescue Coordination Center. So you can press this to your heart's content and nothing will happen. This is just a little door that you open and behind the door is a little switch and you press the switch to activate it. You never want to make the mistake of activating one of these by accident because you will get a response. And the last thing you want to do is ask someone to risk their lives to come rescue you for no good reason. So this is totally waterproof, this, uh, this tool, as is the EPIRP, so they'll work just fine as long as they're charged. The third item is your VHF radio. So this, unlike the last two, which were satellite based, this is VHF based, which is line of sight from the antenna. But the, the, so the horizon for my antenna is somewhere around 10 to 15 miles. But if there's a large ship in the vicinity, which would have a masthead VHF, that increases the range right out to, you know, could be, it could be 40 to 50 miles. So, this has an emergency dis uh, distress button, so you lift that up and you activate the little button on the inside. Again, it's covered, so you can't you can't activate it without uh, you know by accident. So that is the third distress button that I've I've shown you. So the fourth one doesn't have a distress button; it's a VHF handheld VHF. But what you want is you want a handheld VHF that floats and is waterproof. And this does float and, and it's, it's not the only one, there are several out there. But this one I tested the other day by accident. I was sailing off the anchor and when the boat heeled over I just had this on the deck and it slid right off. And as soon as it hit the water, this little light right here, this little white light came on and started flashing which was terrific. So I was able to spot it, I was able to turn around under sail and do the equivalent of a man overboard and recover it. I dunked it in fresh water first chance I got and it works perfectly fine. Now the reason I wanted a waterproof handheld VHF that floats is because it goes over with me if I ever have to abandon ship. And the beauty of this is if you have an aircraft or a um, uh, a vessel that's trying to rescue you and you're in the water you're you are practically invisible and so if you can hail them on the radio and give them a relative bearing from them for example uh, unknown vessel this is I'm in distress I'm in the water I am 200 yards on your port bow uh, I'm waving my hand over my head you know something along those lines get their attention get them looking in the right direction the chances are you've already activated your EPIRP, they're in the vicinity, they're down to a half mile away from you, it's still a needle in a haystack. So if you can contact them via uh, VHF, give them a bearing and a range, you stand a very good chance of being recovered. So this little blue bag I keep right here underneath the bunk in this space so that I know where it is, it's very easy to get to. And inside this blue bag, I have a little strobe that I can actually carry on my person. It's very small and to activate it, it just goes like that. Just sends out a steady light. It may not look overly bright in here, but I assure you at night, this is very bright. So again, you're in the water, you activate this strobe. It gives, let me just save it. It gives the vessel that's doing or the aircraft that's doing the recovery such an easy time to find you in the big waves, you know, which are very difficult to see. This is the uh, second item that I have in here. So this is a bigger one, same thing. This one is actually a, uh, they call it a rescue flare. It's, um, 
it's a flare replacement. So uh, the U.S. Coast Guard recognizes this as a replacement for handheld flares. It's so superior to handheld flares because uh, it doesn't run out. It just runs on batteries. I carry a bag of extra batteries with me and it puts out a nice, very, very bright light and it actually codes out SOS dot 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 so that's S and it just keeps repeating SOS and it's very bright at night and the beauty is it floats as well it'll float upright makes your recovery that much easier again I would only activate this if I hear or see a ship otherwise save your batteries The next item I carry is a, uh, this is a headlamp, and it's a really good one, and it's fully charged. It's, uh, it's charged by, um, uh, by a USB port, but I check it very often, and it puts out a very, very bright light. It allows me to get on deck. It allows me to do whatever I need to do to facilitate my rescue. So I get a few different options, but when it's ready, I could signal a ship with this. It, it's supposed to be good for over 300 yards. And the strobe is fantastic. So I keep that all set and ready to go. And then the last item I have in here is a flag. So this flag is a square flag. Let me just uh, open it up. Which is recognized internationally as a distress signal. And I would tie this to the roof of the cabin, to the top of the cabin. There are tie downs in each corner with a string already attached and that would just get tied down across my cabin top. I've already tried it. It fits perfectly. Next item on my list is this little kit right here. So what's inside of it? This is a great little kit. I can toss this in the dinghy and take it with me and uh, or I can keep it on the boat here. Either way it performs so many functions. Now I've loaded it up with more gear than comes in this kit. So right off the bat I've got four handheld flares that will burn for at least 30 seconds good for day or night. I have a flare pistol with three uh, with four flares standing by and these I find are not that great like they have a very short burn time I think it's only about 10 seconds. The beauty of this system is you can aim it toward but not at the bridge of a ship to try to grab their attention. The next part of this is a little, a little container. Again, this is a great little thing to take on a dinghy instead of taking the whole kit. And on this you have a throw line with 50 feet of rope and a float. In addition, it has a flashlight that's usually stuffed in here. This flashlight, unfortunately, it's just a regular bulb. It's not an LED, but it is waterproof. I don't know if you could switch that out. And the batteries I keep separately uh, in this container so that they don't burn on me. So the batteries are separate. And of course, in here I also have a whistle. And these are the fox whistles, so they're very loud. Although I also have one that will be pinned to my life jacket. And then, again, thinking of a dinghy, this is a great little uh, dinghy anchor. I have a simple uh, nav emergency navigation card that helps you work out your position from some of the uh, star constellations. But chances are, if you're going to go offshore, you would know this anyway. Inside this package, the top is a reflective surface meant to signal your position, which is a requirement by some of the EU uh, countries. 
all packaged together in a nice little kit. Now the next piece of kit I want to show you is my floater suit which uh, not only keeps me warm, I've worn it once or twice just when I was feeling cold. Uh, it's great that way but of course it will keep you floating and uh, it has all kinds of uh, straps on it to help make it tight and secure. This one unfortunately is built for someone who's probably twice my size but it's the one I got and uh, it has all kinds of reflective surfaces on it on the back and on the head. So uh, one of the key things you you always want to see on these are hoods and you want to make sure you cover your head because you can get a lot of heat loss well from throughout your body but keeping your head warm is one of those crucial things that you want to accomplish. So if you find these videos inspirational, educational, just downright entertaining, consider becoming a patron. There's a link in the video description and it doesn't cost you anything to check it out. So the next couple of items I want to show you, well first of all it's an axe, well a hatchet I guess, and it's uh, sharp, it's ready to go. I uh, keep this just for emergencies. It's put away along with the bag with all the safety, uh, the electronic flares, and I, I see its purpose more or less as, uh, you know, this is a big emergency. I need to free up a hole or, you know, this will have no problem going through the hull if I need to for whatever reason or whatever. You know, I may be rescuing someone else or I may have to cut a line. Any way you cut it, it's good to have a good sharp tool like this. The second item I want to show you is this flashlight. So uh, I've been using this now for several months, probably the last six months, um, uh, four months on board Wave Rover, but before I took it on board, I tested it out uh, on my property. It's amazing. Um, 4,800 lumens, maximum output. It has a maximum throw, and this is the critical bit of 1,600 meters. So that is the better part of a mile. Um, it can give me light for 112 hours, but of course that's not at the maximum lumens. It, uh, it's totally rechargeable and it's tactical. And I believe by tactical they mean that you can drop it and it's going to be just fine. So this is, this is the flashlight. This little port right here, this is how you charge it. It takes a USB, but you close this little door and it's waterproof. You activate the flashlight back here. You just press this button so it's one hand operated and it comes on and you can just uh, use it. And then this little button on the top, this is the control. So I'm not going to show you uh, with um, by looking into it because it's extremely powerful. And there's four settings. That's a maximum setting. It will just stay on this setting for, uh, well, you just saw it. It geared down by itself because it gets very, very hot and it stays then at this level almost indefinitely. And then you can cycle through to the bright again and then back down. So whatever level you leave it at, and I leave it at the low setting, it will always remember that and come back on. So uh, this flashlight, like I said, I'm so impressed with it. Everybody I've shown this to always takes down the information because they want to get one. I will put the uh, link to this company in the video description and uh, you can check it out for yourselves. Well, Rovers, this last item might be a little controversial because I don't carry a life raft. I get asked that a lot, but I consider Wave Rover my life raft. I want to do everything possible to maintain this vessel, to make sure that it's still afloat. So to that end, I keep an assortment of tools and repair material, and I'll show you that right away. So again, on a small boat, it's really easy for me to keep track of where everything is. That and I, I go through it all the time to make sure that I know where everything is. But part of um, the first thing is all these um, locker lids, they're all the same size and they're really large pieces of plywood, relatively speaking. And these, uh, the reason behind this is these can be fit quickly over top of a hole in the hull 
to get the uh, boat to be watertight again, or that's part of the scenario. Inside this particular locker, let me just move the camera a little bit closer. Inside of this particular locker, this is where I keep all the tools that I believe I may need, plus, you know, uh, just regular maintenance tools. So in this bag right here, I keep screws. And the screws are all neatly packaged in different sizes. They're all ready to go, and I have a huge assortment. In this bag, I keep bolts. And I have, again, bolts of every description that you can think of. Different sizes, um, and they're all stainless. They're all ready to go. They're neatly packaged. And of course, there are washers, and there are uh, nuts. And uh, yeah, she's all ready to go. A hammer, because you can always use a hammer. An assortment of multi-tool parts, and that's because I'm going to show you the power tools that I, that I carry with me, because that is an important part of how I can uh, quickly do a repair at sea. A quick clamp, because it's good to have that third arm. A hacksaw, uh, hearing protection, although that's more for me generally. Butyl tape, ready to go. inside this bin I keep a selection of tools, uh, marking tools, uh, pliers, extra knives. These are terrific to carry with you. Um, and then a whole bunch of replacement blades for those knives, pliers, screwdrivers of everything that I could possibly have on Wave Rover. That's in bin number one. Then in the second bin, this is where I keep the power tools. So I have a drill, and these are all fully charged, but it doesn't matter. I do have a charger with me, and I have an inverter that I can plug the charger into. That was one of the reasons why a lot of folks said, oh, you can just make everything DC. Well, this doesn't work directly, or it's beyond my ability to turn this directly into DC. So um, it just comes from the factory ready to go like this. So a drill, very handy to have. A driver, you cannot beat having one of these for driving screws. Doing with a screwdriver is just, well, it's difficult and tedious. Uh, this is very quickly, when you've got water squirting in and you need to get a screw on, this is the tool you want to use. These are cobalt uh, covered drill bits, which means they can drill through stainless steel without having the issues that regular bits have. A spare battery, and I've made sure that my drill, my driver, and the multi-tool all use the same batteries. And the multi-tool, which really, I only started using these when I was building Wave Rover, it just it just occurred to me that this is just such a handy tool to have. I can cut a piece of plywood or shape it so quickly with this, or I can uh, I can chop it with the hatchet that I just previously showed you, and I also have a handsaw. But this is terrific for cutting very quickly and accurately, as long as you have sharp cutting tips, which is the reason I have this kit that I showed you. Uh, prior. So this this is the tool kit and I also in the bin here I have some extra clamps. I also have pieces of plywood strategically located throughout the boat, different sizes, uh, ready to go, plus some uh, hardwoods. The most important safety tool you're ever going to carry on board 
is what's on top of your shoulders. Uh, the attitude you bring to an emergency is going to make all the difference. That sort of, uh, I'm not going down, I'm going to keep this boat afloat, I'm going to make sure I get through, people are depending on me, I've got to carry on. Those are the attitudes of a winner, someone who's going to survive, as opposed to someone who gets overwhelmed. And the difference is experience and knowledge. So uh, keep that in mind. And the second most important safety feature you can have on board is your health. So to make sure that you, are, uh, you have a good sense of balance, that you're strong enough to carry and lift things, um, and flexibility, make sure you're flexible enough to bend over, reach into spots when it counts to, to uh, make, you know, to recover items or to uh, make that play that's going to win the game for everyone. Bear all that in mind. As always, it's been a pleasure making this video. Thanks very much for watching and for your own adventure.